So, you have applied for PMP and found out that your application has been selected for an audit? What? You know what? I feel you. So, do not panic. Let's figure out what to do and how to pass it. What is up, everyone? Welcome to my project management sandbox. My name is Chris, I'm PMP certified, and before I got certified, my application has passed an audit too. Thus, basically, I'm going to share my personal experience and tips on how to approach this situation. And before we dive in, make sure to subscribe and let me know in comments right away if you need to pass an audit too. So, let's go! To begin with, when could you be audited? Actually, PMI reserves the right to pick your application for an audit either before the exam or when you have already passed the PMP test. So, that is why it is extremely important to make sure that you have completed your application thoughtfully, that you have all the references on hand, that all your reference people are informed, that potentially they could be contacted in future, and they need to agree to confirm your professional experience for the Project Management Institute. If you are selected for a note before the exam, you usually know this right away. Well, at least in my experience, as soon as I have submitted my PMP application, I saw this exciting notification on the screen instantly. You have been chosen for an audit. Haha! <laughs> yeah, but so basically, what does it mean that you have been selected for an audit? This means that PMI is requesting you to confirm all the information that you have provided in your application related to your education, professional experience, and professional professional education, sending them all the supporting confirming documentation. By the way, let me know in comments if you have already submitted your PMP application. When you know that you have been selected for a new date, the next step would be to carefully review all the information that PMI sends you to your email. And as always, you can contact PMP PMI support, as they are usually very much responsive and provide all the necessary information in order to help you pass an audit. Well, in my personal case, and probably this would resonate with some of you too, before I have submitted my PMP application, the majority of my project management experience during my career was earned while I was working remotely with international teams and clients. This means that all of my references were located in different cities and even countries, and that promised me a really hard work ahead. Usually, there are three types of documents that you need to provide to the PMI. And keep in mind that all the documentation should be gathered, packed, and sent physically to the headquarters of the Project Management Institute. So, for those three types of documents, there are education, professional education, and uh, experience. What you are going to do is this. For the education, what you're going to do is to make a copy of your diploma with all the transcripts. And by the way, keep in mind, if it is not in English, you need to translate it. As for the professional education, you are going to make a copy of the certificate that you have received after you have completed your professional education and earned those 35 hours. Here is where all the fun comes. So, to confirm your professional experience, you need to meet with your reference people in person and ask them to complete the templates provided by the PMI where they are stating that they confirm your professional experience on some project. And make sure this is done in a hard copy, so they are going to sign those documents by hand, pack them in the envelope, close and sign over it. If you have been working remotely, like I did, yes, this is going to be a little bit harder, but still, this is not the end of the world. So, what you're going to do is to pack those templates in the envelopes and send to your reference people. Ask them to complete the documents and send them back to you by the regular mail. Well, of course, this is going to take time and it is going to be longer than if you are able to meet those people in person. However, you anyway need to do this in order to pass an audit. What you also need to know is that if you are selected for an audit before the exam, 
you are not eligible to take the test before you confirm your experience and all the information from your application. And what is more, you are not even able to book the seat for the exam before the audit is passed. Therefore, it is extremely important to do everything as fast as possible and to do this accurately. Because, for instance, when you have everything on hand, you need to pack it all together and send it to PMI, and PMI doesn't accept partial parcels of the confirming documentation. Thus, make sure that you are sending all the information all together. So, you have gathered the confirmation documents of your education, of your professional education, and of your professional experience. You have packed all together and you have sent it to PMI. Hooray! All the hard work is done, so now you need to receive the confirmation from the PMI that they have received everything and that they confirm that the audit is passed. By the way, I'm going to put the link to the formal requirements for the audit in the description to this video. Now, let me know if this information was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and share the link with your peers and friends. And see you next Wednesday.